as a country. There you take it now, switching gears uh, in a few. As COVID-19, the pandemic has forced both developed and uh, the developing world uh, to uh, depend more on the internet. Uh, working remotely has become the new normal. Uh, the challenge is, however, uh, that uh, cyber security and vulnerabilities uh, are very prominent in the private sector and the health space as a whole. Uh, now it is more pressing than ever. For more on this particular conversation, uh, we have uh, Judith Malemo, the CEO of Risk Imperium Consulting, a UK Uganda based cyber security firm. She joins us from London. Judith, many thanks for making time to speak to us. Um, uh, just a uh, uh, let, let's Thanks start this off me. with uh, how uh, working remotely is the new normal. Now, we, most of us never actually prepared for this. Uh, do you get the sense that we are arguably more vulnerable now, more than ever, uh, given the fact that, uh, let's face it, we weren't even prepared? Absolutely. And, uh, you know, just as you mentioned, most of us did not anticipate this. As a result, a lot of organizations have had to shift the way we work. And most people are, of course, working from home, uh, you know, to ensure that they continue running those critical services for their organizations to, you know, uh, to still doing, uh, to still continue doing business. So as a result, of course, this has presented a lot of challenges. Some of the challenges include looking for those collaborations tools that we can you know we can leverage and make sure that we can continue those operations but of course with that is you know setting up the IT infrastructure most organizations did just not prepare for this and they did not have the infrastructure so looking for the right software to make sure that you know uh, they implement uh, those uh, you know those tools to uh, to manage working from home so that has been a, a real challenge but of course what presents with that challenge is uh, you know cyber threats we've seen a real rise in uh, in the kind of threats uh, that are happening these are not brand new threats it's just that people are exploiting the you know uh, the capability to work from home and therefore looking at the VPN, uh, you know, uh, infrastructure, looking at any software, collaborative software, whether it's, uh, you know, video conferencing or teleconferencing. So the cyber criminals are exploiting these. And, you know, as you mentioned, it's become the new normal, but, you know, the, the threats keep increasing. Uh, I want to give you an example of uh, Zoom. Now, uh, uh, before this, uh, everyone was very big on Skype and everything, and Zoom has gained a lot of traction. Um, though Zoom has been criticized because uh, it is not big on security. Why do I say this? Someone can easily crash your meeting. Um, if uh, a, a huge listed company like Zoom Technologies is being this uh, bombarded by uh, cyber security threats, uh, uh, who's to say an ordinary Joe like Arnold here uh, shouldn't be extremely worried? Well, the thing is, with uh, you know technology like Zoom, Zoom was not necessarily created to accommodate the the capacity that you know that we're seeing today. Zoom, I think, initially when it was created, it was meant for probably small businesses probably individuals more than anything, but we've seen that there's been a real rush because everyone was looking for that collaborative tool to really, you know, leverage. And as a result, they've gone to Zoom. Now, the challenge, of course, that we have is that when Zoom probably was developed at the time and, or designed and developed, security was not embedded. And as we know, security needs to be embedded. And of course, this message pretty much goes to any software developers or software engineers to ensure that security is an integral part of the design, development, and deployment of any software as well as infrastructure. So it's become harder. Even when Zoom has tried to tighten their security, still the bombing is going on as you as you you know you clearly indicated. So really it's this is this is a challenge that most organizations are facing. Briefly, before I let you go, uh, the elephant in the room is state-sponsored espionage. Now, uh, this is always a, a, a pointing game. Uh, the, 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 the Asians, I won't mention a few countries, they point at this one and they point at the other. Uh, is this a good, uh, opt-in time uh, for state-sponsored uh, uh, espionage to actually uh, uh, gain as much traction as everyone else is looking at the healthcare system? 
Well, there is uh, there is the healthcare system, and of course, mainly the healthcare system today, simply because there is real focus, as in you know during the pandemic. That's that's. Right now, I'm doing some work for the National Health Service in the UK, for example. Now, obviously, that is the service that is being required the most. But, uh, you know, the in terms of extending the security, the security goes cuts across all industries. And, uh, you know, to just make sure that people put in place the preventative controls, detective controls, as well as understanding the recovery of, uh, of this. But, yeah, agencies are doing a lot of work to identify where the cybersecurity threats really are and really bringing those to light. Uh, Judith, uh, this is getting very interesting. Uh, just maybe one more last one. Uh, the financial side of things, uh, uh, accounts being sold online for giveaway prices. Uh, would this be a time that we even worry more than, uh, than even before? Absolutely. Uh, you know, fraud, fraud is a an, an increase at the moment, but not only not only from a financial sector perspective and only accounts perspective. There is also data being sold online, you know, on on black market. So identity theft has also been on an, on an increase. So really, you know, it, it makes us worry. But I think the most important thing is what we do about it. What we need to be doing is ensuring that we have cyber resilience in place to to just withstand all these kinds of cyber attacks. Many thanks for uh, making time to speak to us. Uh, that was uh, Judith Malema, who is the CEO of uh, Risk uh, Imperium Consulting, a UK uh, Uganda based uh, cyber security firm. Let's take a quick break after more NTV at one.